Hello, and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our brand new stencil pastes. We have them in six different colors. First up, we have Fairy Dust, which is this beautiful clear iridescent sparkle. Then we have White, which is white. <laughs> then we have Pearl, which has this great pearly white color. We have Silver and Gold and also Glow in the Dark. And we're gonna shut off the lights right now and check this out. How cool is that? Next up, Shari is gonna show us all of these pastes. She's gonna take us through each and every one. And then she's gonna make seven cards with these pastes that are gonna completely blow you away. Oh my gosh, I had so much fun watching Shari and I know you will too. So take it away, Shari. So let's take a look at the new stencil paste from Lawn Fawn and compare all the colors together. I am putting them on a piece of craft cardstock and just using one of the snowflakes from the new snowflake background stencils. The first one I've got here, this is the white paste. Next, I'm going in with the pearl paste. So you can see it has a little bit different color and a shimmer to it from the white. And you'll definitely see that when I pick this up and move it around in the light in just a little bit when I get all the colors on there. Next, I'm going in with the silver so you can see that color compared to the pearl. It's a very light silver, but it is really beautiful, especially on dark cardstock, which I will show you on a card later in this video. Next, there's the gold, which is just a beautiful color. I really love this gold color. It's very yellowy, true gold, and it just really catches the light. The next color is Fairy Dust, which is a clear gel with an iridescent glitter in it. This looks really great over top of stencils that you've already inked through, and I will show you that in this video as well. And then finally, we have the Glow in the Dark paste, which you're not going to see very much on this craft cardstock, but you're really going to see it when I charge it up with some light and let it glow. So here are all those colors. You can see the difference in the pearl and the white. You can see how those pearl, silver, and gold ones really catch the light. You see all that shimmer in the fairy dust. And then I'm going to get a flashlight and charge up that glow paste so that you can see just how well it glows. Look at that really fun glow effect. So let's make some backgrounds and look at some techniques with each of these pastes. For this background, I've got a piece of white cardstock and I'm just using the white paste. And I'm just going to use one of those snowflake stencils and create a background with some snowflakes that's white on white, which has a really cool look that I will show you once it dries. But what I'm going to do with this in the end is I'm gonna do some inking over it because it will also give you a resist, you can resist some ink and get a cool resist technique. So I'm just covering this with the paste, filling in all those snowflakes that are on this piece of cardstock. This is a four and a quarter by five and a half piece of cardstock, although I will trim it down to make a card. And I'm gonna carefully pull away my stencil and you can see that fun white on white texture. So I'll set that aside to dry. And then for this background, I'm using one of the stencils from the plaid stencils. This is the one with the little stripes. And then I'm gonna also go in with the larger one and add some gold stripes. So this is just on some craft card stock. This is the pearl paste, so I'll have that pearl and the gold, both of those metallics on the craft. And I'll be cutting this down with a die to create a card. So it's a little bigger than I need it to be, and it's okay that it's a little messy off to the sides because I'll be trimming it down. So when I pull this away, you'll get these really thin pearl stripes, which are really fun. Now I've let that dry and then I'm going in with the other stencil from this set that has wider stripes and I'm going to add gold. The one thing you do want to be careful with doing a double one like this is that original paste has some height to it so this stencil isn't going to be completely against the paper depending on how thick you put the paste on. So it's just something to be careful with when adding a second step of the stencil. So you can see for me, I'm trying to go with that stripe and not go against it so that I'm less likely to get any paste underneath the stencil. So 
So once I have all these stripes filled in, making sure I get this corner up here, I'm going to pull that stencil away. And I did have a little bit of that paste go underneath my stencil, but it was very easy to clean off. Now on this background, I'm using that craft paper again, and I'm just using the new fall leaf stencil, and I'm putting down a layer of oxide ink for all these leaves. So I started out with some mustard seed, I'm using some carved pumpkin, and the look of oxide ink on craft is really fun, but I'm going to add some gold stencil paste accents to this once I get this whole background created. Once I have all the leaves from the first stencil done, I'll layer on that second stencil, which is gonna fill in those voids that the first one left. And I'm using Crackling Campfire for my dark color on this one, and then I'm also using that same carved pumpkin for the lighter color as I blend these two together and fill in all those leaves on the second stencil. So I've got this background done. I've cleaned off my stencil and I'm gonna realign this one with those leaves that I put the ink on before. And then I'm using that gold paste to just fill in the little circles, which are the berries on the branch. And then I'm also going to fill in parts of some of those larger leaves. So you're just gonna get these gold paste accents on some of these leaves and some of these smaller ones I'm filling in completely. But this just has a really cool look in addition to the inking that I've done through the stencil. Once I've got that paste in all the places that I wanted, I'm gonna pull this stencil away and you're gonna see how fun it is to have that inked background and then those accents of gold that just pop, especially when the light hits them. So let me pull this up and I'm going to turn it so you can see how the light catches that gold and it is just so beautiful. So the next background I'm working on, I have a piece of Blue Jay cardstock and I'm using that same snowflake stencil, but on this one, instead of using the white, I'm going to use that silver, which is really pretty on this dark cardstock. So I'm just going in with my little palette knife and putting a layer of that stencil paste through all these snowflakes onto that piece of dark blue cardstock. And once I've got it all in there and I pull this away, you're going to see that beautiful silver snowflake on that really dark background. It's just very striking. So I'll pull this up and kind of move it in the light so you can see how the light catches that silver. For this background, I'm using a piece of white cardstock and I'm using that snowflake stencil. I'm inking through it with some distress inks. This is some worn lipstick distress ink for this one. And then I'm going to layer the other stencil over and completely fill in this background. On this one, I'm using some Kitsch Flamingo, so you get that really pretty bright pink. And then I'm going to do a lot like I did with the leaves. I'm going to clean off my stencils and then layer that first one back over top of those darker snowflakes. And then for this one, I'm using that Fairy Dust Glitter Paste. So those snowflakes, you're going to see that darker red color show through and then they're gonna have a layer of glitter on top. So that's the really fun thing about the Fairy Dust Paste is that you can put it over something that's colored and you're just adding that shimmer and shine of the glitter and you're going to see those colors shine through. So let me remove my stencil here and then I'll pick this up and move it around in the light so you can see that glitter catch the light. Now this white paste can also be dyed with some reinkers, so I'm just putting a little bit on my craft mat. I have a peacock reinker. I'm putting a couple drops of that ink right onto that paste, and then I'm just gonna mix it up using my palette knife. You wanna make sure you mix it till it is nice and smooth and the color is incorporated throughout the paste. And now you have this custom colored paste that's going to match your project. 
I'm going to be putting this teal colored peacock paste that I created through one of the snowflakes in the snowflake trio stencil to create a focal image for a card. So I'm being careful not to go off the edges of the stencil. You could always tape this off to protect your card base, but I'm actually going to be using a square die to cut this out and make a little panel where my snowflake is. But look at this really cool, it has dimension because it's paste, but yet it is colored to match your project. So back to those white snowflakes I created earlier, the white on white. It has a really cool look just as it is, but I wanted to show you that it also resists the ink. So I have some salvaged patina distress ink and my blending brush, and I'm just lightly going over each snowflake, and it gets this really cool halo color around it, which I just think is really pretty. So I'll just go through and add some ink to each of the snowflakes. Now you could ink the whole background if you wanted to, but I sort of like these points of color, just focus where the snowflakes are. So I'm using a smaller brush for the smaller snowflakes. And then I'll go around the outside edge with some color as well to define the edge. Before I do the color on the outside edge, I am going to use a stitch rectangle to trim my panel down. And you get this nice, clean, stitched edge for your panel. So I'm just using that same salvage patina and just inking up the edges to define this inked panel. And look how pretty that is. And then I wanted to add a little bit of shimmer, so I'm just using my white metallic watercolor to add some flex to the background. You can't really see them very much, they don't stand out, but you do see them when the light hits them. So here's all these backgrounds and images I've created with the paste, with the exception of the glow in the dark, which I am going to make a card with as well. But I've used my stitch rectangles and stitch squares to cut these panels down so they have a nice finished edge. And then I'm going to create some cards out of all of them. So for the silver paste on the Blue Jay cardstock, I'm just adding that to a white card base with some foam tape. And then I'm using the new giant Let It Snow die, and I've created a sentiment with a little white shadow behind it. And that just fits perfectly right on that beautifully created background with that silver paste. Really simple and easy card. Next, I'm doing the same with those fall leaves. I'm mounting this one to a vanilla malt cream colored card base because I think that goes really well with the craft and those warm colors of fall. And then I'm using the giant thank you die and I've cut this one from some brown glitter cardstock so that is a really pretty and stands out on that background. And then I'm going to add a little wavy banner to the bottom and add the words for everything from the thanks 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 stamp set so that my sentiment says thank you for everything. I'm just stamping this on a wavy banner that is cut from some sunflower cardstock and I'm stamping it in walnut ink so it matches the brown of the die cut sentiment above. And I love how the light catches that gold as well as the glitter. Now my inked panel I created earlier, I'm mounting that onto a peacock card base with some foam tape. And then I'm using the new Magic Iris Snowflake add-on. This is a really fun frame and it matches those snowflakes perfectly. I've cut this from some silver glitter cardstock. I'm just centering that up and then I'm going to put a white die cut circle in the center with my sentiment. I'm using the new Magic Holiday Messages stamp set that fits inside the Magic Iris frames. It says Warm Winter Wishes and I'm just stamping that in peacock ink so it matches my card base onto that white circle and I'm going to pop that up with some foam in the center of that snowflake. And then I wanted to add a little color to this so I'm adding some red stickles just to those berries and accenting around that sentiment. So for that peacock snowflake I created with the dyed paste, I cut that out with a stitched square and then I'm inking up the edges just so it's not so, so bright white because I'm going to put this onto a white card base. 
So I've got given the whole panel some color. I'm taking another stitch square cut from Rainforest cardstock, mounting those together so you have that little dark border around it. I've got a white card base and I'm stamping the Let It Snow sentiment from the Winter Big Scripty Word stamp set. I've also wrapped some peppermint twine around the card and then I'm adding some foam tape to the top and bottom of this snowflake panel so I can pop it up and it can go above and below that twine. Now this is the new Magic Iris Fall Leaves add-on. It creates this really fun frame of fall leaves and what I thought I would do, I've cut this from some canned pumpkin cardstock, but I don't want all the leaves to be the same color. So I'm using colored pencils to color my leaves. You could also cut this out of white cardstock and use Copics to color the leaves if you like, but I just thought this had a unique look to use the colored pencils on the colored cardstock. So I used some dark red on those smaller leaves and then I'm using some yellows and some oranges on the larger ones, putting down a light color first and then going back over with a darker, more vibrant color. And you get this really fun look on that colored cardstock. I'm also adding some brown to the branches, but I will use some glitter for the berries. Of course, I've added some foam tape all over to the back. This is the striped background that I created with the pearl and the gold paste. I'm putting it on a cream colored card base. I've used some foam squares to mount my leaf frame and some apricot cardstock in the center. And I'm using the Scripty Autumn Sentiment stamp set for my sentiment. I've stamped the So Very with some chili pepper ink and then the Grateful is white embossed on some chili pepper cardstock and cut out with the coordinating die. And then finally, I'm adding some of those red stickles glitter to the berries. And just look at that shine on that background. It's so pretty. So for my pink and red snowflakes I created earlier. I'm making a square card. I'm mounting this onto some raspberry cardstock. I've cut the Scripty Mary die from some chili pepper cardstock and some black licorice cardstock. And I've also cut the word B using Kohl's ABCs. And I'm just layering these together so they have a shadow, a drop shadow behind them. And then I'll just add them to the front of this really simple card for the sentiment B Mary. And then I'm also going to add a few sequins. These are iridescent sequins. These really match that fairy dust paste. It has that iridescent shimmer. And then I'm just going to show you all the cards I've created here. So that one has fairy dust. This one has colored white. This one is silver on dark. This one is gold on craft with some inking gold and pearl stripes on craft, and then the white on white with some resist techniques. Finally, I wanted to show you that glow in the dark paste. It's really cool, so it kind of needs its own special card. And to do that, I'm starting by creating a background. This is like a night sky so that I can put some glowing stars on it. I've put down some wilted violet distress ink, and then now I'm going in with blueprint sketch to create a night sky for some glowy stars. So I'm using some Bristol cardstock to do my blending on, and I'm just gonna go back and forth between the two colors till I get that nice dark sky. And then I'll also add a little bit of black soot to the corners to really make it look like a night sky. Now that that panel is all inked, I have put my Starry Sky stencil over top and I'm just adding a layer of that glow in the dark paste all over this background. So these stars are kind of cool because you're not going to see them very much. They're not going to stand out against that background until they glow in the dark, which is just a really fun effect. They're just going to disappear and just look a little bit shiny until you put them in the dark. So you can see that shiny look, but once you put some light on it and charge them up, you get this really fun glow. I've used the largest stitch rectangle to cut that panel down, and I've also cut a piece of black licorice cardstock. I'm going to use the stitch tree borders to create some trees to go along the bottom in a black silhouette against that night sky. 
For my sentiment, I wanted to create it inside of a glowing moon. So I'm using the Lucky Star stamp set and that sentiment that says, I love you to the stars and back. I'm stamping it in VersaFine ink because I know that this will not smear when I put the moisture of the paste over top. And then I'm just putting a layer of the glow in the dark paste all over this sentiment, making sure I cover an area big enough to where I can die cut out a circle and get a glowing moon. So what's really cool about this because it's translucent is this sentiment is going to show through when the paste is glowing, which I just think is really fun. I've set that aside and let it dry. I'm actually using one of these circle slider dies because the size of the inside circle was perfect to fit around this and create my moon. So I've die cut that out. That whole thing is covered in that glow in the dark paste. And then I felt like when it's not glowing that the sky was a little empty. So I'm adding my gold splatters that I like to use for stars just so that the sky is filled with stars whether the stars are glowing or not. Once my splatter stars are all dry, I can add adhesive to the back of this panel and put it onto a card base. And then I can add some liquid glue and add my silhouette trees to the bottom. I'm using liquid glue for the moon as well. This is gonna hold everything down really well. And I like that I can tuck it behind one of those trees so it looks like the trees are in front of the moon too. I'm gonna to use an acrylic block to hold it down while it dries. And then I'm gonna charge it up with my flashlight so you can see the end result that glows in the dark, which is just so cool. And then I'm going to turn my lights back on so you can see that finished final card. Thank you so much for taking us on your stencil paste adventure, Shari. I learned so much and have so many cool ideas. The glow in the dark is so much fun. I love how you added just a little bit of gold paste to this card to add accents, and then you created a whole background on this one. The glitter on top of the inked snowflakes are so adorable, and then the silver looks so gorgeous on dark colored cardstock. I love how you inked over the paste and how it resists that ink, so cool. And then you added color to the ink as well. So so many fun and cool ideas and next up we're going to show you some gorgeous cards by the design team and this card here by Elise is so stunning and what she did was she added color with her stencil and then over one stencil she did glitter and over the other she did pearl and it adds such beautiful texture. Yanea did something I never would have thought of doing and now I can't wait to try it and that's to layer her stencil paste over pattern paper. So she used the white stencil paste over her pattern paper and look how cool that is. It has such a cool vintage feel and I just love it. There's a card we created during the Perfectly Wicked video and it's got those awesome stenciled stars and then as you turn off the lights we get that really cool glow. I am just so in love with this glow in the dark stencil paste. Next up, we have a beautiful card by Mindy, and I just love those muted soft fall colors. And then as we take a closer look, you'll see that she added some fairy dust stencil paste over some of the leaves and details, and it just adds this subtle little glitter that's so pretty. Here, this card by Kara is so fun, and I love that gold paste over those dark red colors. So gorgeous and pretty. This card by Audrey is so fun and she also added some glitter fairy dust over top of her beautiful fall leaves. And man, I kind of want to add that fairy dust over every single thing I stencil because it is so pretty. And then here this card by Melissa is so fun. I love that white stencil paste on that purple cardstock. So pretty with the vellum over it. So we cannot wait to see what you guys create with these new stencil pastes, so make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today and we hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.